Let's discuss how we can turn our data from the acid base mole ratio lab from this raw data into a graph which we can use to interpret what is happening with our limiting reactant. So you can see I've done the eight different runs. And so what I need from that is I need the volume of acetic acid that we added and the maximum pressure. And you can find the maximum pressure in the box on the second row, it says max. So for this run, the maximum was 100.0, for the next one it was 102.4, and so on. So you're going to need those numbers from your lab data. To save time, I've already written those down, and I've got them in a document over here. So I know for the first run, the volume of acid that we actually added was zero. That was our baseline. We were just wanting to see how much would it change over those 90 seconds just from being in your warm hands. Then we added one milliliter, two milliliters, three milliliters going on up. So your run number does not actually tell you the volume of the acetic acid. Run number one actually only had zero milliliters. What I need to calculate to graph is delta P, or the change in pressure. That triangle is a Greek capital letter delta. So we're going to start doing that using the formula where my final pressure for a given run will always be, sub I will always subtract the final, pr the pressure from my zero milliliter run. So let's see what's going to happen here. We'll call this the change in pressure. And so for our zero milliliter run, the max pressure at whatever milliliters is 100.0. And I would subtract the maximum pressure at zero. And so I end up with a change of pressure that for this first run is zero kilopascals, KPAs. Well, that wasn't very interesting. Let's do it for the next run. For the next run, I'm going to take the same formula, but now instead of, I'm going to take the number from run number two. That's 102.4, and I'll subtract the 100.0 of my baseline. That's going to be equal to 2.4. So this will be 2.4 kilopascals. The next one then would be 105.2 minus 100, so that would be 5.2, 8.0, 9 9.8, 9 9.1. I'm always subtracting the baseline number, and eventually 9.7. So the graph that I want to make with Logger Pro is going to be a volume versus the change in the pressure. So I'm actually going to go ahead and open up a copy of Logger Pro. And we're going to just type into it like we would a regular spreadsheet. But I want to set this up so that the graph looks right. So I'm going to double click on the box it says X in the data table. I would like this to be my independent variable and that was the volume of acetic acid. So we'll make that volume. We'll give it a short name, make it V for volume and the unit here is milliliters. And we'll click done. And so we'll do the same thing for the y-axis, double click, and we're going to graph the change in pressure. And since that's a pressure, we can give it a short name P, and our units are in kilopascals, KPAs. So before I click done, I'd like to make this a little bit easier to see. So I'm going to go to the options box and it'll automatically graph as an empty circle. It's a little hard to see, so I'm going to go ahead and change it to a filled circle. And if I wanted to, I could change the color. 
I'll make it orange. Why not? And then I'll click done. Okay. In this case, now all I have to do is just type into these boxes like I would for a regular spreadsheet program. The first run, there were no milliliters. Then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And I'm graphing my change in pressure here. So this would be zero. This would be the 2.4, 5.2, 4.5, 9.8, 9.1, 9 9.4, 9 and 9.7. I got those numbers, remember, from my calculated table here. These are my changes in pressure that I'm putting into Logger Pro. So in Mr. Cunningham's video, he talks a lot about what these different regions of the graph mean, so I don't want to spend a lot of time talking about that right now. I'm just going to show you how you can in make the lines to help you interpret it. You can see you have one region of the graph here where it's increasing and increasing and increasing. So I'd like to find out what does that trend look like? So I'm going to click on the graph and just hold down, scroll back to highlight, and I'm going to go to that linear fit tool and put a line on it. The newest version of Logger Pro on the lab computers looks a little bit different, but it's still the same button. It's three over from the collect button. So that's the part of this where the graph is going up and up and up. But we have this section of the graph where it seems to have leveled off. And so let's see what the trend would be here. So I'm going to highlight that. And again, I'll go to the three over from the collect button and I'll hit that. And now I have these two lines, one representing the trend in the graph where it has leveled off, one representing the trend in the graph where it's increasing. And what that tells me is where these two lines meet is where those volumes should have been equal, the number of moles would have been equal to each other. We don't know exactly what that volume is, it's somewhere in between these two points. So what I'm going to do to find the exact number is I'm going to go to Analyze and click on the Interpolate function. Then now as I drag my cursor across the screen, you can see we have a little vertical line that's appeared and it has circles on it. And in this top box, I have the volume of acetic acid that corresponds to the change in pressure for each one of those lines. So to find where those lines meet, see they get closer and closer and closer together. And I'm going to try and get this right as close as I possibly can and make those circles overlap. Then I'm going to look at what is the actual volume of acetic acid that would have been the stoichiometric one-to-one, -one, exactly the right number of millimoles amount. In my case, if I line that back up, it looks like it's right about 3.8 milliliters, which makes sense. At four, it does appear like the graph begins to level off. At three, we were obviously not quite to the point where the graph levels off. So I'm going to copy this and insert it into a Google Doc for my group members to access pretty simple. You can right click on the graph and click copy and then you'll be able to paste that into a Google document and share it.